Today, we're going to show you how to assemble the Rover tank body. To start with, gather all the components that you'll need to assemble the project. We'll begin by assembling the bottom frame. Take one of these red frames and insert a short black pin into each of the three holes on the side. Then snap on the black beam centered so there's two holes on either end. Then repeat on the other side. Three short black pins and insert the beam centered with two holes on either end. Next, we'll add the front axles. Slide the axle into the second hole of the 11 hole beam. Place the large red bushing on the end inside the frame. Then add a half size bushing and slide it all the way onto the axle, followed by a small gear. And another small bushing. Make sure to press them all together tight. Then add one last small bushing, just slide it on loosely about halfway onto the axle. And this is what the completed single axle looks like. Now we'll go on to the second one. Grab another set of the components and slide the axle in through the second hole from the end. Add a full size red bushing. Then on the outside, a short gray half bushing a small gear, another half bushing, and then finally a loose half bushing, just about halfway down. Now we'll assemble the outside beam connectors. Take two of the three hole long beams and connect them together with two of the long blue pins. Do this so that one of the pins is sticking out from the middle and the other is sticking out from one of the ends. Then add two of the short black pins as shown. Now repeat these same steps to make a second one. These parts are basically a spacer that's going to go inside the tank tread. Now bring the outside beam connectors to the framework we've already assembled. We're going to snap these into place on the black beam. Make sure that there's still two holes exposed on the end of the beam. Then we'll do the same on the other side. Now we'll add the outside beams. Before we do, remove the half bushing from the front axle. Now we'll be able to slide on the beam, making sure the axle goes through the second hole from the end, snap it in place, and add the half bushing back on. The 11 hole long beam should line up with the existing one already on the frame. Then do the same on the other side, sliding on the beam and snapping it in place, and then sliding the small half bushing all the way up. Here's what our project should look like so far. Now we'll add the rear axles. Take an axle and slide it through the second hole from the end of the beams and place a red full-size bushing on the inside. Slide a gray half-size bushing on the outside. Then do the same on the second part, sliding the axle through the second hole in from the end, adding a red bushing to the inside and a gray half bushing to the outside. Locate two nine hole long beams and four of the short black pins. Insert a pin three holes in from the end and all the way on the opposite end. Do this for both beams. Snap the blue beams onto the top of the red frame. The pin that's the third hole in should be towards the front of the tank and the pin that's in the far back end should be towards the back of the tank. It's servo time. Place the servos roughly back to back with the wires on one going down and the wires on the other going up. We're basically going to make mirror images of each other, putting a peg in one side on the top of each servo. 
Then we'll put two of the short black pegs onto the bottom of each of the two servos. Now we'll add the gears to the servos. Line up one of the large gears with the plus shaped cross section on the servo shaft and press it in place. Do the same on the second one, lining it up and pressing the gear onto the shaft. Now let's add the servo to the frame. Keep in mind we're calling the end with the gears the front of the tank, so the servo will be the left servo. Notice how the gear on the servo meshes with the smaller gear. Now let's add the right servo. Keep in mind that since one of the servo wires is pointed down, we need to pull it back and out of the way into the small notch before adding the right hand servo. Again, notice how the gear on the servo meshes with the smaller gear. Now we'll take the second red frame and insert blue pins into the front corners of the frame. Then we'll place the red frame directly down onto the servos. Try to push it down nice and straight as it's going into the black pins already on the servos as well as the front holes on the servos. If the blue pins pop up, that's okay, just push them back down into place. As we proceed from here, it's easy to lose track of which servo goes to which servo connector. So what you might want to do is simply mark one of the connectors just to keep track of it. In this case, we're just putting a small piece of blue painter's tape onto the left servo connector. Now we can do a bit of wire management. Just tuck the servo wires inside the body of the tank. We just want to keep it away from the tank treads, but have the ends available to plug into the bit board. Now we can slide on the front sprockets. Just line up the plus shaped cross section of the sprocket with the axle and press it on. You might want to keep a finger on the other end of the axle to keep it from moving as you slide the sprocket on. Remember, there's already a half size bushing on the axle. This acts as a spacer. Make sure to press the sprocket all the way up against that bushing. Now we'll add the rear sprockets. These go on just like the front ones. Line up the cross section and press the sprocket into place while holding the back of the axle still. Make sure to press the sprocket all the way up against the half bushing. Now comes the fun part, the tank treads. On top, you can see what a finished assembled tank track looks like. It's made up of 21 individual pieces. Start with by sorting these pieces. Make sure to place them flat side down. After that, start lining up the parts, all facing the same direction. Each individual piece connects one to the next to the next. Overlap two parts and snap into place. Then just repeat this until the entire track is assembled. When you're all done, you'll have two completed tank tracks that look just like this. Place the tank onto the tank treads with the sprockets centered on the tracks. Wrap the tracks around the sprockets and line up the ends. Then snap the first piece and the last piece together. Do the same for the tank tread on the other side. Now we'll add the bit board. The bit board snaps down over the two blue pins. First, we'll add the micro bit. Just insert the micro bit directly into the bit board. Make sure the LED display is facing front. Then, set the bit board over the tank and press it down over the two blue pins. If you'd like to have a tighter connection, simply add a beam right over the top of the bit board and snap it into place. Now, we'll spin the tank around and work on connecting the servos. 
Remember that earlier we marked the left servo connector with a small piece of blue painter's tape. This makes it easy to identify. We're going to plug the left servo into the row for pin 13 in the blue high voltage header area. We should see the wires as orange, red, brown. Then the right servo will plug into pin 14. Again, we'll see orange closest to where it says 14, then the red wire, then the brown wire. Locate the battery holder. If the battery pack isn't already in the battery holder, simply line it up and push it down into place, paying attention to the notch for the wires to go through. Press it all the way down. Then flip it over and we'll add two short black pegs centered on the back with one empty hole between them. The battery pack snaps in place on the back of the red frame, pretty much like a backpack. Congratulations, you just completed the physical assembly of the Rover tank. Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? But it's not going anywhere yet. Not until we add some code and connect up the battery power. Follow the link in the step-by-step -step tutorial, download the code, and copy it to the micro bit. Then connect power from the battery pack to the bit board. Make sure to check polarity that the red wire goes to the plus symbol on the board. The tank will move forward and showcase its zero turn tank steering. Now that you've built your tank, try it out on all sorts of different surfaces. Learn about sensors and programming interaction. Or make up a game. You can do all of this and more with the Bitboard Rover Tank. For projects, ideas, step-by-step -step directions, and more, visit browndoggadgets.com.